swear to God, if it's not working right now. All right, the stupid lights are on. Twitch is working. Oh. Are we up? Are we functional? Oh. That was pure luck. Oh my God. Oh, yep. Here I am. Oh, I don't know if it was worth it though. My my good mood is gone. My cats are terrified because I've been haranguing the heavens with all this nonsense. Oh, we're gonna have to have to do a little bit of psyche repair here. Whew. Yeah. All right, and this, okay, it's probably not the room. It's probably just me. Oh, it's got to be just me. I am just boiling. Probably from the rapid back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> kitchen living room, kitchen living room, kitchen living room. Check the camera, check the camera, check the camera. Oh, my God, that was awful. Just awful. All right, so step one is get back in a good mood. Dun, 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 dun. To do that, we're going to need some delicious Diet Pepsi. Knock this camera so it shows the crafting table more and me less. A little more that way. I'm going to go see if I have those headphones in the other room. Or over here, or wherever they might be hid. YouTube has this stupid moratorium on music. Alright, well, I don't know where I put them, so. Tough luck. Alright, let's grab some. Let's just die at Pepsi. Oh. It was awful, don't I? Absolutely awful. Absolutely terrible. There was a bomb threat during one of the Regents exams, and I just had the webcam not working for about, oh, it's 9.23, so about 27 half hour minutes. It was pretty bad. Oh, yeah, possible racial. It just. My problem is that I think a couple days ago, Windows did a little update, and I tell you, my, my frustration o meter hit skyrocket levels when I. I didn't change any settings, nothing, and you know, it's one of those, I might have stepped on a cord, but I sure as heck didn't step on a cord so hard that it broke into a wire or frayed anything, because you know, I don't do that, uh, and uh, you know, it's like, I change nothing and it doesn't work, and that frustrates me so much, so... Yeah. We have no idea who did it, Dante. No idea at all. I only found out it was a bomb threat 
after, oh, <laughs> maybe an hour into it, a <laughs> little over an hour into it, after we evacuated the building, teachers sitting around having no idea why we evacuated, and students asking us left, right, and center, you cats haven't been chewing on cables, have you? I mean, I love you guys, but if you're chewing through my stuff, we might need a cat skin rug around here. I don't think you are. I don't see any teeth marks on it. I think you guys are good for balls. So, yeah. So, I'm going to take a few moments with a little Diet Pepsi and just cool off with my wonderful new dollar store glass here. I love this thing. This glass easily weighs one and a half to two pounds. This is the kind of glass you could beat an intruder into your house to death with. And yeah, we'll be back at it pretty soon, Dante. For my other YouTubers, Dante is one of my middle school students who will be in eighth grade this year. Yep, originally intended for margaritas, but uh, I really don't drink margaritas. I do drink Diet Pepsi. I do enjoy a, a full-figured glass. Yeah. <laughs> also kind of toying with the idea at one point of taking a glass and putting witch wood around it and making myself a, uh, a witch goblet. Thanks, man. I'm going to keep it up, damn it. <laughs> Till I kick the bucket. <laughs> oh. Ah, Diet Pepsi. It soothes the nerves. Alright, we gotta move this monitoring post over there. I think we can extend that down and over. Ah! There we go. That can go up there. Perfect! There's a good monitoring screen. Hopefully, nothing froze. <laughs> I see myself not moving. I'm like, oh, did it freeze again? Did it freeze again? No! No! <laughs> mm. Yep, we'll be back at it soon enough. Just after Labor Day, in fact. Yeah, the only trouble with a goblet twisted would be that, uh, number one, it would not be dishwasher safe. <laughs> Um, but you'd also have to have your, uh, you guys don't have a great angle from there, but you'd have to have your witch wood start at the bottom, come up, and then you would probably need a zone around the top where you simply could not put anything. And you'd have to probably put a layer of, um, some sort of, uh, food safe varnish around there. And that's really not too tough at all. Oh, pardon. <laughs> uh, teaching anime. I'm not doing a goblet tonight. No, tonight I'm going to do the rest of the filming on the witch bottle. Get that all set and good. However, we just had a, a half hour worth of shenanigans where the camera wouldn't work. And uh, my stress levels topped off. I'm sure I woke up the landlord's kids with my fuming and raging. Oh, it's one thing if I did something, you know, if I was screwing with the camera and the settings went wonky and, you know, I changed something and then there was a problem. But when you change nothing and you activated it as normal and it doesn't work, that's when I just flip out. How's it going, Carmen? 
and we are going to get started in another half glass and a half of Diet Pepsi so I can just recenter myself and become awesome. I should not be drinking this right now because it's got caffeine in it, which means I'm going to be up till midnight. But, uh, uh -huh. well, the teaching is done on the uh, tutorial videos, Carla. So, this is just crafting time with Dragon Fang. We're filming the tutorial videos, and Lord knows if you go through these uh, live streams and watch, you'll learn how to do it. But these are not direct instructions. <laughs> I'm going to indulge it <laughs> massively. All right. One more glass. Uh, I'm not touching the with what. <laughs> Good stuff, Dante. All right, one more glass. Oh, thank you, Carl. I do work well on them. We're going to have the Witch Bottle tutorial has one more filming session, probably, which will be tonight. Then I have to edit the thing. That's going to take about five, six hours. Um, after the Witch Bottle tutorial main session comes out, I'm going to do a little addendum video because everybody's probably going to see the skull wine bottle in the background and every comment and its brother, oh, pardon, soda burps, is going to be asking, how did you make the skull? So... In order to preempt that, I'm going to make a little micro video on this is how I made the skull bottle. And depending on that, how the timing of that goes, I just was doing some research and asking some questions in town. The Dollar Tree around here has to have all its Halloween stuff out on the 23rd of August. And they've got some other cool stuff. they got like some little mini skulls and things like that. So I may hold off the how did you do the skull tutorial. Or I'll put out the main witch bottle tutorial. And put in the description, hey, there's another video coming out about how I did the skull. Look for it. I'll wait until the 23rd. I'll go raid the dollar store. Get a bunch of their stuff. Make another bottle where I'm going to have a whole bunch more cool bits added to it. I mean, this one's just got some plastic gems. And, uh, that one I'll do a, this is how you, this is how I did the skull, here's some other cool bits, and do that. Yeah, which bottle tutorial is going to be the next one out? Whew! And then it's going to be the witch orb tutorial. And a witch orb, fortunately, is just an extension of the same techniques that you use for the witch bottle, so. Yeah, it should fall right in line. I just gotta hit up Walmart and get some paint, because I really gotta. <sighs> gotta do something with this, um, this monster bottle. I need some violet, I need some red. I need some, like, turquoise blue. I might get, like, a dark gray just to screw at the bottom. I might get, like, a metallic orange for some of these barnacles. I need something for the glyphs I want to put all over the bottle itself. I don't think I want to use Sharpie for them. I think I want to use some sort of pardon paint. Oh my. My sincerest apologies for all the burping. I drink a lot of soda and it's bound to rebound. Rich or which orbs? First came the bottles, then came the orbs. Yeah, they're getting on there. I 
Uh, give me a couple of days, Dante. When school starts, things are going to be hectic and people are going to be going everywhere. The new folks are going to need to know what's going on with what. So, <laughs> give it a little time before you start going places on your own initiative, man. Because <laughs> if you start wandering the halls, everybody else is going to go, Hey, he gets to wander the halls. Everybody gets to wander the halls. Let's see here. Alcohol painting. I have seen a lot of the very beautiful techniques with that. Um, and I wonder actually if on the glass, the alcohol stain might not do a very great job of distributing a, a sheer blaze of color, which could really take up the light behind it. I think that would be a, an amazing method to try, test, and mess around with. So, you know, the more you mention it, the more I'm thinking that could be cool as hell. I just don't know how soon I would be able to get with that. Because I've never done that method before. I've seen it used on ceramic, but I personally have never, ever, ever messed with alcohol painting. And... I don't think it would be a huge problem for hitting the mache because alcohol dries rather readily and any kind of stain that gets on or with it could then be painted over with acrylic if you didn't want it in that area. So, yeah, I think for coloring the glass, whoo, you could get a an absolute bouquet of color, particularly good for uh, like the monster bottle here. Or any kind of uh, chaotic color pattern could be really, 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 really good. And even on a witch bottle, uh, if you didn't want the dirty look on a witch bottle, the alcohol pattern could be neat because it could add a kind of a magic-y blitz to an area of it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for the alcohol paints. <sighs> a lot of potential. Just give that a quick wipe. Got some mache paste on the ping pong ball eyes. I want to have my my fancy cleaning bowl here. All right, then I'm gonna finish up that last soda. I'll put the bottle back in the fridge, and we are gonna get going with the filming for the. Orb. Or which bottle tutorial. So I'm going to get that done tonight, and it's not very hard to do. It's just the standing and how to throw the light on. Yeah, yeah. Be very good. Again, I just don't have this stuff, and I've never done it before. Uh, we're going to need a hot wire foam factory cutter. It means we're also going to need this, which I really hope I have room for. Yes, I do. Thank God. I realigned the power to the webcam in my many frustrations to try to get it to work. Let's make sure the Hey, I'm Still Filming plate is still visible. And that it's not visible to the main camera. But I don't want the chance that a, <laughs> that a paper plate is going to come into contact <laughs> with a hot foam cutting wire. <laughs> Sam so the cat. What are you doing down there? You're wondering if Dad's still going crazy from earlier, aren't you? All right, let's finish this off. Let's get all the belches out of the way. Let's pray the caffeine does not keep me up too late tonight because I still have to proctor an exam tomorrow. Hopefully nobody will call a bomb threat in on that one. Old jerk today. 
Let's get this mouse in my pocket so it's off camera. <laughs> yeah. I don't even like to risk that. All right, cat, pop up. Come on, Fuzzball. Daddy Pepsi's going back in the fridge. <laughs> Look at it this way, cat. Either the soda's going in the fridge or you are. <laughs> earlier while I was raiding. Good for balls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You either came over to see what the problem was or you stayed the hell out of my way. That was very nice of you. Yep, we gotta hit Walmart for the monster bottle. Need some more paints. Okay, let's get... Let's get a cleaner apartment. <laughs> Let's start with that, shall we? <laughs> uh, let's get the soda burps out of the gut before we film. Cute bottle, or cute bowl. Let's make sure we don't break off the protuberances on these witch orbs. I need a better spot to store these witch orbs. I don't want to throw them in the garage though, because mice will raid the fluff for nests. All right, let's get the game face on. Oh, okay. <laughs> that game face on. Let's let's try to pretend it's not a sweaty, hot August night. Ah, we're coming down from a stressy time. <laughs> Lighting looks good. Cat looks good. Meow. How much cleaning do we have to do? No. Glycol. Hmm. The glycol. Interesting. I shook this up earlier. The glycol is getting a pretty constant layer of uh, foamy bubbles at the top of this, which, in a witchy brew thing, I really don't mind. That's pretty cool. Plus, I looked up the numbers. This thing shouldn't freeze until it hits minus 36, sir. Somewhere in the minus 30s Fahrenheit at about a 50% mixture. All right. Let's do some filming and some staining. All right, your cotton's all set. It's set overnight. It's dry, and it should look gloriously spooky. Yeehaw. Hopefully. If it doesn't, well, do a little more work to it. It's not going anywhere, and it does dry and harden pretty rapidly. But at this point, you've probably noticed that you've been touching this thing the entire time with mache paste cottony soaked hands, and consequently, the dry bottle has got, well, a layer to it, let's say. The next step, and this is, well, I want to say it's optional, but I always do it. I like to get that crusted layer of mache paste, at least for the open areas, cleaned off. So just a basic kitchen scrub brush and a little bit of water. Warm water, not warm water, doesn't really matter. This stuff cleans off so easy. 
and just find yourself a spot and give it just a quick once over. If you have tiny filaments in there, it really shouldn't matter. Just try not to scrub through them and move them around. If you can and you think ahead of time, as I currently just didn't. A little bit of paper towel. Or even a spare cotton ball. And you can wipe any of that extra crud clean from your bottle. If you want the bottle to have an exceptionally dirty look, well, you don't have to do this step. I just always do because I like the light to travel relatively unhindered through my bottle. Any areas where I have intentionally put some scuzz, like this spot right here, I laid this whole cotton scuzz piece on. I don't want to strip that stuff off. So I'm just going to dip my scrub brush, squidge out the extra bit of water, and I'm going to just run this very quickly over and around it. I'm not looking to remove the stain and the dirtiness, but I just want to get the extra mache paste off the glass. Some of your cotton fibers may start to float around when you do this. That is fine and it always happens. Just leave them there and let them reharden, which they will do within a few moments. This really does not do much more than eliminate the scuds on the glass. The actual cotton fibers will reestablish themselves very rapidly. And by now we should be in the fast forward time on the filming. <laughs> well, it's plugged in, but it's got an on off switch, and right now it's off. <laughs> fairly fire conscious. Of course, now that I've said that, it's going to get knocked on for some reason. Some cosmic <laughs> screw you is going to activate. To be sure, I would never leave a hot knife and paper towels like that overnight, and I would never even leave my hot knife plugged in in any kind of overnight situation. Simply would not happen. Too dangerous. Too stupidly dangerous. It's just, it's one of those so preventable kind of affairs. Back to filming mode. I'm about to make y'all very happy. Okay, now your bottle's all cleaned up for the most part, except for any areas that you wanted intentionally dirty. 
And all we should have on the inside is our nice cloudy water, plus all of our good nasty root structures on the outside. It's at this point that we are going to awaken the evil with some wood stain. Let's chat about wood stains. You can stain your bottle any stain you want. If you want your bottle to be red, pick a red stain. If you want it to be dark, pick a dark stain. If you want it to be black, I wouldn't recommend it. Just flat out. It's too dark. It's good to have color contrast with this sort of stuff. The one I've used for most of my things, which looks like this, when you get okay lighting, yeah, that's not too bad, uh, is a special walnut stain. So if you're looking for a starter stain and you want to emulate this effect, look for special walnut. If you don't care about what I'm doing and you want to do your own thing, please do your own thing. Other stains that look very good are the dark walnut. I really don't care about the brand. I'm not advocating any of these guys. They're all as good as you can. <laughs> Get what you can afford. My first one I got from a dollar store. Uh, this one here was done in the dark walnut stain. And it is, well, darker. <laughs> Uh, of course, if you're like me, you're not content with either one. So I took a whole bunch of special walnut and I mixed it with some of the dark walnut. And then I thinned it out a little bit with some miracle, uh, mineral spirit so it would creep into all the cracks very well. And that was mostly for the Witch Orb project, which will be my next tutorial. But my combined stain is what I'm using for this one. So it all works. Suffice to say... Pick your stain of choice. Try not to get it all over you. Just giving this one a little stir up. When I stain, I like to use a nice, fairly soft bristled brush so that I can get down into cracked areas. And as opposed to painting, when I'm trying to deliver uh, and cover areas, with staining, particularly of this stuff, I find what I'm really trying to do is just dip my brush in the stain and then deliver that dollop of stain to the cotton witchwood here. The stain will then seep into it and spread of its own accord. So I don't really have to spread it myself. I'm just trying to deliver large dollops to the project. The only area where I find that I actually have to brush on is some of the finer tips of the branches in any of these areas where I've got little bits of dirtiness I don't want huge dollops of stain down here so I'll add my dollop in the larger area and then I'll brush down into the cruddy areas now stain is going to go onto your clear glass it's going to drip down this is to be expected and not worried about Later on, what I will tend to do is if I don't like the look of it, I will grab myself a Q-tip. I'll find those areas where stain dripping down, where I'll find the areas where stain's just gotten everywhere, and I will just vigorously rub that Q-tip in there, and the stain will get pulled off. It will not adhere very well to that glass at all, and you'll clear up your glass with that. But let's bring the evil out of this thing, shall we? I lied. Let's open this can horribly and get covered in stain first, shall we? Okay, we're lucky. It's okay. Let's fast forward, fast forward. Here we go. I have a second camera, folks. <laughs> the one that you guys are seeing is not my tutorial camera. <laughs> I should probably add that to the video description. Everybody's always saying that every time. <laughs> I 
It's like, you guys know my work, hopefully. You know I don't go, hi, here's a whole bunch of crap you can't see. Because it's off camera. <laughs> oh, that smells like wood stone. I agree, yeah, that red stone is uh, definitely peeking out nicely. Probably going to wait till I hit one of these branches on here and I will zoom in on the camera for a couple of close stained blasts so they can watch it seep in a close up. Hopefully, I can balance that well enough. We'll talk about delivery in real time. <laughs> now at least we got the camera working, Rosani. That was driving me so far up a wall. <laughs> it was infuriating. Uh, it is a piece of red acrylic gem. They're practically a plastic. Really. And the only mistake I really made in this project is I should have hot glued them on at the very beginning because they weren't sticking to. And right now the, um, the witch wood is the only thing that is anchoring them. But I don't think they're going anywhere. They're very, very, very well anchored. Definitely a, a project that can be <clears throat> malleated with. I'm actually going to go for a close up on the camera in a few seconds here just because with this project I'm rapidly going to run out of the areas to grip this project and it's going to need to stay on the table. So let's do the whole close up bit on the stain now. Alright, I'm going to try very hard. <laughs> to try to get you guys a close-up bit on the staining and how this tends to move and work without, number one, getting stain all over the everywhere or turning the white spots on my black and white cat kind of brownish. So the general maneuver is to get a whole bunch of stain on your brush, find a spot on your project that needs the stain and just add it to it and let the stain seep. The stain will go where it needs to go. You don't need to brush around. There we go. Let's tilt this towards the camera. There we go. Balancing act. And keep it on there. Be also prepared. Any objects that you have put into your witch wood are going to get stain on them. If they are anything that can absorb stain, they will absorb stain. The wooden discs that I have in this project absorb the stain. 
and they were intended to, so no problem there. But think about it ahead of time. If this is something that will absorb stain and you don't want it getting darker, maybe you want an actual bone fragment in there, bear in mind when you're staining, it's going to absorb stain and you may need to paint it white a little bit afterwards. My skull here did have that problem as well. When I was doing the initial staining, it got stained. This was a brown skull. I had to go back over it and dry brush certain parts with some white to bring it back up to color. And we're back and forth. Yeah, fast forward. So, yep, uh, definitely stain. Super, super, super stain. I mean, you could use watered down brown paint. You absolutely could. I like the wood stain because the wood stain, I believe, penetrates into the cotton a little bit more. And I think the wood stain gets you a little bit more protection for what is still essentially just paper mache. And to any of the YouTube folks who were confused, that was to my Twitch audience. Still very impressed by how tough this stuff gets. Every time I'm working with it, I think, oh god, this stuff is just so it's so spongy and uh, and then after it hardens, man, it's just like a rock paper clay. Just like paper clay. We should probably tell the folks at home about nooks and crannies in a second here. No, I haven't. I You probably could put something on there to stop it, but no, I don't think it's that worth it. At least not with anything I've tried. The glass all cleans up really, really well. And to a certain extent, I really do kind of want the stain everywhere. I want it to meld with the design. I should probably also talk about brushing some of these spots, too. Bless you, cat. Let's do another quick one for the folks at home. And we're back again. Another quick area to consider is as you're going along with your staining, there's going to be a lot of nooks and crannies. There's going to be spaces here that you've got to bring your brush over around and really tuck in to get to the side. You want to get as much exposure as possible. Be prepared for those. And also, after you go through your staining the first time and you let it dry overnight, you're going to want to go back through on day two and just have a quick little look around your project from different angles and make sure you didn't miss any spots that will tick you off too much. There's some folks who will be using these on Halloween night, and if, quite frankly, this may be in the dark the entire time. Kids are going to look at this and go, oh, wow, scary, spooky, glowing bottle. Oh, wow. They're never going to be like, hey, 
Hey, you missed the spot behind the gem right there. What the hell? You suck, mister. You suck. Nobody's going to do that, okay? Make sure it's up to your standards, but be aware, it can be easy to miss little patches inside the twisty turns. Another fact to consider, if you do have a spot where you put a huge blot of stain on there and it really drips and dribbles down, and you're worried that might not come out with a Q-tip and a little bit of scrubbing, just take your brush while it's still a little bit wet and just thin it out a bit so that when you do come back to it later on, it's not as big and thick of a blotch to clear out. It's easier to plow through a thin layer than it is a good drip streak. So thin out any spots that you think might be problematic later on. And then definitely back and fast forward by now. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's another aspect. I should probably have a third warning there about doing the top last and the bottom last, but uh, I think I'll let people figure that out for themselves. <laughs> well, I do have other crafty things on my plan book. I mean, honestly, it's it's only since I started having you guys around to craft with that I've really kind of kicked up my game. So, hopefully this will keep my efforts more active. Yeah! Hey, Nuchu, how's it going? <laughs> the hair comes off the dog, but the dog has more hair. But the hair comes off the dog, but the dog has more hair. Ah! <laughs> oh dear. And the same things when I see all the cat hair that gets around this place. <laughs> How are you two not little hairless cats by now? <laughs> mm, what got in here? It looks like a... Oh, damn. It looks like a fly. See, it's buzzing and not fluttering. That means it's a fly and not a moth. I don't mind having a moth. I do kind of mind having flies. On the plus side, though, it has the kitty's attention riveted. What's that thing up there at the light? It's moving. Hmm, I've forgotten how fast the staining goes on these things. Super quick. <laughs> have to slow the time compression down. Yeah, <laughs> sky raisin. Same thing for dogs. Yay, sky raisins. My cats love bugs too. They will, they'll chase them all over the house. Beetles, flies, they don't care.
Hmm. Ah, so nice. I'm winding down again. Oh, my streaming schedule is going to be like when school starts. Just go up from the bottom. Make sure this area is clean. Pick up gunk from the table. I remember seeing a video about that lady. There was somebody who like had a business on it too. Like send me your pet hair and I'll make you a sweater kind of thing. <laughs> Good stuff, Tina. Sahin the cat, what are you doing down there? That suspicious look about you. Actually, we're going to do things a little out of order. As soon as I finish this bottom section, we're going to show it to the camera. And we're going to talk about how we put the light in. Then we're going to put the light in. Then we're going to do the top. And then... it up so that we can show it off early in the video actually I wonder if you can uh, clean up the stuff while it's still wet Sam, what are you doing? Fuzzy bear! What's up, cat? What are you doing? Come here. No? Don't meow at me like I'm not paying attention to you, and then you don't come over for pets. Wow. 
come on. I, I extended my hand. You didn't want to come over for pets. All right. Dad's busy. You know how that works. Yeah, the gems are pretty working. Uh, this is a um, special walnut is the name of this stain. Wow. Yep, you could use a gray. I mean, anything you want it to look like. It all works. Wow. Wow. I'm just hitting up all the areas that I think are a little too light. up here oh hush cat hush hush fuzzy bear Gray driftwood piece could look gorgeous. All right, I'm going back into film mode here. Let's get our hands a little bit stained. All right. Well, I haven't done the top because I need to be able to hold this thing in order to bring it over to take a look at. But here is the ultimate effect of the witchwood. And this method can be applied to the swamp bottle technique that's on many a YouTube video and really all sorts of stuff. You could use this on scarecrows and it's really virtually always the same technique. You just take your cotton, saturate it, put it on, and it gives you this beautiful twisted wood look. Now, because of the nature of the video, <laughs> normally I would do the top, then I would mount the light. But I'm really anxious for this tonight and having a lot of fun with it. So I kind of want to put the light under it, deal with the cat, and then paint the top and leave it on a note so we can turn this light on and enjoy it as I fade on out. Putting the light under this is very, very simple, especially if you're using one of these little puck lights. Because again, as I demonstrated, this thing just goes right on the floor. They go straight on the floor with no effort whatsoever. It is amazing how fast they fall on the floor. Let's, let, can we shoot this again? I'm lying on the director. Here we go. Take two. <laughs> okay. We're going to take our little floor magnet here and on these bottles again. They do go right up underneath. The trouble is holding them there. There's lots of ways to do it. In my earliest experiments, I used to take pieces of Velcro and cardboard. I would make these elaborate little bits that stuck up and in. That is fine. You can find ways to do it. The easiest way that I have found is to go to your local dollar store, get yourself a pool noodle for a buck. Then, get yourself some sort of cutting contraption. You can use a box cutter, but the folks at Hot Wire Foam Factory have been very good to me. So, I'm going to use one of their four-inch uh, little hot knives. And all you're going to do, for me, depending on the size of your pool noodle, I cut out two little sections which are about as tall as my puck light. I'm just going to eyeball it here. One. Two. 
two. Each section needs a spot cut into it so you can open it. Your pool noodles may vary in size and your wine bottles may vary in size. So this may not work for everything. But with this size of pool noodle, and I would hazard a guess that this particular one is about three inches across. So this is the cheapest type of dollar store pool noodle that I know of. Hey, there's a little label on it. The label tells me nothing, which is a bad augury label. You take your two open sections, you fit it together into a little funky S shape. This thing will compress down into a shape that will hold and apply tension to the walls of the cardboard structure at the bottom of the wine bottle. So if this thing were dry, I'd be grabbing it easily and happily. It's not. So I'm going to dra just grab it by the bottom here. And this will help with let me demonstrate it. And then I'm just going to wedge my foam in there. And that should hold perfectly well. And not come out. Simple, easy, and cheap. Now I'm going to paint the top. And we're going to talk about the cool lighting options that you've got with this. Assuming you use this method. And I should be back to fast forward by now. Uh, let's see here. I just use flour because I've always used the flour. It's a good effective method for me. I find that with the cotton, the extra flour in there gets there, gets into it and gives it an added rigidity and toughness. So, up to you. Do what you want to do. Go where you want to go. Do what you want to do. And if you use wood glue, it is definitively pretty darn waterproof, too. No, they haven't made a cat-proof glue. Sorry, Sam. Nope, sorry. <laughs> Bienvenido. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily makes it stronger, but it makes it more firm. Oh yeah, it's the, one of the problems with this project is it definitely does get all over your hands. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not peeling my hands, I've been staining. Let's do some filming mode.
All right, bottle's all stained and it's in good shape. At this point, if you've used the same type of light that I had, or if you've used any other type, you're ready to give it a light. Um, again, I usually let it dry first, but hell with that. It's all ready to go. Let's have some fun. So there is the witch bottle with some cool gems in there. Different lights will give you different options. This one has, well, currently it's on its flash setting. Nope, that's its smooth setting. Let's set it to fade. But there ultimately is the Witch Bottle project. The final step, which I will do in the next little segment, is go through. I've got a lot of spots here where I've got wood stain that is just near and around the, um, the witch wood parts. And to be perfectly honest, cleaning it off is entirely optional. If you like the dirty, grungy look that it's got, leave it. It is not going to be a problem. Quite frankly, over many years of handling it, bringing it in and out of Halloween displays, this stuff is going to wear off anyways. It does not stick to glass itself particularly well. But if you want to, grab yourself about four or five Q-tips and just rub it off. It will pop right through. And then you've got your bottle. And depending on the light you picked, you can change the color to be whatever you happen to want it to be. Different lights will react differently. And especially if you put any kind of colored gem in it, those gems will react differently with the lights as well. Let's do a quick uh, voice activated. I don't know if I can say this on YouTube, so we're going to be hesitant. Alexa, turn off craft light. Let's <laughs> see if we can get a light modulation. But under blue light here, my red gem, which obviously you guys can't see, and I will scuzz up my hands a little bit. see if that's a little clearer. Under blue light, if you have red gems, they will go quite dark. Same with green light. However, if you have a yellow light, that red gem is going to illuminate quite brightly. Red's just going to foster red, but different colored gems and glasses in there will reflect different colors of light as it transits through them. In fact, let's just set it to a fade and you can have a quick look at that. So decide what color lighting works best with your haunt. And uh, the great thing about these pucks is they do a gazillion colors, so you don't have to pick. But next scene of the uh, tutorial, I'm going to go back through, clean this all off, and then talk about do you have to seal it or not. No, I'm going to talk about that now. You don't, in my opinion, have to seal this unless you really think that your witch bottle is in danger of getting massively, massively rained on, or Ketadon, who is meowing in the background. Either of those two things. And you could take a urethane stain and a paintbrush, go through, once again, you got to get the little nooks and crannies, you got to get the extra urethane off the glass, it may not look so good. I have not sealed any of mine because I do not anticipate them being out in the rain. Of all the times he picks... So, you could seal it, you don't have to seal it, that's the project. I'm going to clean this up, show you the final finished bottle when this is completely all set and dry, and we're going to call it good. And then we'll have a small segment on how to attach certain other parts, since I have a feeling if I don't, I'm going to get deluged with comments on, how did you make the skull bottle? I also want to raid the local dollar store, it's August as I'm filming this, just before Halloween. I want to get a whole bunch of little parts. I want to see how well they stick so I can show you guys some tricks on things to stick to this. All right, so I'll catch you for the next segment. <laughs> Let me guess, Sam. The bug flew up on top of the sink, huh? Wow. Well. <laughs> you know, I wish I had that kind of flexibility with uh, the 
Alexa device. I really do. Yeah, I'd love to put a mini skeleton on. There's also some little, um, like little skull. The, the Dollar Store is advertising a lot of stuff on their website that looks brilliant for this project. Tons of just little bits that, to stick on this. Like there's like a little rat skull and all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, man, for which bottles coming out, Dollar Store is your buddy. You can make some really, really amazing stuff. I also do have those um, glass bowls I got for uh, witch orbs, which I might... I don't know. I might do um, a modified witch orb and just kind of see if I can do funky stuff on this thing. Oh, no, I wouldn't use the whole rat. I'd use the skull and some of the bones. <laughs> I'd pull those things apart. I'd never use the whole thing. I mean, for a buck, I can afford it. Yep, you could use the ping pong eyeballs, all sorts of pieces. Suffice to say, that place is going to be great for bits. Little bits. Tons of little bits. Like a little cat. Wow. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. I think the gems worked out pretty darn well, though. I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how well they worked. I might do a bottle with some green ones. Yeah. <sighs> you know, this might just be my default project. Like, if I don't have anything cool and new to work on or amusing to work on it's gonna be like november it's like hi guys uh i got nothing let's make a witch bottle here we go <laughs> i saw the tiny skulls on their website Definitely have them there. Yeah, they told me here on the 23rd, the 23rd, all the Halloween stuff will be out. So I will be there at opening time on the 23rd. <laughs> nice. Actually, good. That's all the. No, we got to do one more footage segment. And that'll just be after this is cleaned up. And then we call this done, and then we do the extra video. I will be amazed if this goes more than three videos. The condensed time should be very short. Probably do uh, maybe two, two 15-minute sections. I wonder how well you could do a snow witch orb. You know, if you got, I've got a whole roll of this, um, like, clear cellophane wrap. And I'm willing to bet that if I took it, twisted it, and hit it with heat gun, in fact, I know how that comes out. It comes out as a, um, just a wrinkly plastic. I don't know what happens when light hits it, though. But I'm willing to bet it would have kind of an icy, frosted look. I just don't think it would have an edged icy frosty look. So you could do it, I think. I don't think it would hold up very well by itself, though. So it's the kind of witch orb I would really want to have a an internal support of some type, but you couldn't use a wire because the wire would stick out like a sore thumb inside there that's one i would i would i would go out i get one of those little i would definitely get a small globe or uh i don't know <laughs> maybe two of these bowls <laughs> i glue them together <laughs> they make an okay hemisphere about the right size yeah two bucks i'd, I'd just do that <laughs> 
Only problem is you'd have a very obvious seam line. And around this one of the sides you'd have the bowl resting line. Yeah, that wouldn't look so hot. Let me grab one of the uh, the bowls I did grab. Just for uh, get some shiggles and show and tell. And let's unplug the foam cutter. I don't even want that near a paper plate and plugged in. Orb. Well, it's not an orb, it's a, it's a bowl. But it's orb-like. Sort of get rid of this label. I'm not going to WD-40 it tonight. Um, it's 10:37 p.m. I have a test to proctor tomorrow. Come to think of it, I don't have to be there until later because I don't have a morning test to proctor. I can get away with that. I only have to proctor the afternoon test. So I may get up a little later tomorrow. It's so not enough. Vengeful mood. Besides, I want to play with my cat. He's uh, he's meowy. That's the only thing I don't like about this Andalo. This uh, this orb, if you will, is in my opinion too small. Let's grab uh, grab a previous orb. Here is the first witch orb I ever made. Here is this orb. Size comparison, this thing is about maybe two-thirds the size of the original. You're losing a substantial portion of size. Let's see if I can give you guys a better angle comparison. Hopefully that, yeah, that gives you a better angle comparison. So, yeah, you could use, I don't know, I don't think you'd need a mini puck. I think a regular puck would still work. And I mean, I'll be honest, I would not use the mini pucks just because they use the coin lights. That's my prejudice. That's not because they're bad. That's not because of anything else. That's just because I am sick to the teeth of batteries I can't get at a gas station or something like that. Now, this puck light will fit just fine in there. No problem. No problem at all. Now, what I would be tempted to do is get myself a cardboard piece, drop something that's about the size of the puck on the bottom and then mache up around it. That would give me a little bit of artificially inflated size. Um, I might do something around the top as well, just to get this top section a little bit more rounded. To do this, I'll get the snow globes from the Dollar Tree. I don't think they'd be big enough, quite frankly. Lights aren't in the bottle. Lights are under the bottle. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, there's definitely going to be stuff after Halloween. Absolutely. I also want to make a big, um, I want to do a couple of big projects too. I've got stuff on my list. i got stuff on my plate. Again, it's always in the past been a matter of I haven't had the motivation to do it. And I haven't had people to craft with. And now, at the very least, I have people to craft with. So that is nine-tenths of the motivation right there. Um, I'm not planning on a lantern because that's really what the witch orbs are. Hell, God knows you can make a hell of a kick-ass lantern, though. You know, you could make a witchwood lantern. You wouldn't have to do an orb. Man, you could make a beautiful, beautiful witchwood lantern. With like a little hinged door. And one of those little locks on it. That would be friggin' gorgeous. You can make the main body out of PVC. You can make the main body out of cardboard. You can make the main body with cardboard and paper clay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, which wood lantern? I would take a piece of PVC that was the right size. I got, in fact, I got a, got a couple chunks of uh, four inch PVC. You take some cardboard, you wrap it around it, and you just use that as a form. Get it in place. You know, I wouldn't actually put a door on it. The door would be an illusion. The door would look like one of those hinge doors, but it would be a it would be a puck light underneath. Hmm. Yeah, doing the inside with, um, hell, I'd use wax paper for the windows. That way it's just clear white, and if you want whatever color, then <laughs> I want the lantern to be orange that night. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> I want to take one of those little candle lights and put it in there. Hey, there you go. Done. I want them to be green. <laughs> kind of think the majesty of that one, though, would be... Because I've seen people do stuff with the lanterns where they get some really, like, they get black uh, construction paper. Then they get a really beautiful design. And they get, like, an X-Acto blade. And they cut their design out. And either they back it with a piece of white paper, which is kind of what I'm thinking would be the ideal. And they put all that together, and you just got a, like a gorgeous panel in there. Because doing a lantern project with the Witchwood and the rest, I really think would be key to making a gorgeous panel. <laughs> Pan the panel will be the key there. And the panel will be the most time-consuming aspect of it, because Witchwood is... <laughs> I don't have a three episode thing on which wood, which would stupid easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love these lights, absolutely. These are the handiest, cheapest little thing. What is it? $13.95 for uh, four of them. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I ordered eight more recently. Well, I had a little trouble with Amazon. It said $13.95 and free shipping. And then I went there. I ordered two. And they're charging me $9.95 for shipping. And it was standard prime shipping. And I'm like, whoa. That is it free shipping. What the hell? So I ordered one. And then I got free shipping on the standard like e-packet from China. It'll arrive sometime in September shipping. 
So, honestly, that's kind of what I was thinking, Razani. I was thinking Witchwood. Because Witchwood is, it's a, as far as I'm concerned, it's a universal technique. You can use it for flip all everything. And I plan on using it a lot more. I might take a pumpkin and do witch wood on it. You like that idea, Sam? So do I. I think we should witch wood a pumpkin. Maybe do a fancy carve on it, too. I could do that, uh, that headless horseman I do every year. I could throw witch wood all around it. You really like that idea, don't you, Sam? Yeah. Come here. Can I get some pets now? Done filming, cat. You gonna keep being cruel? You're gonna keep being cruel. Yeah, I want to get a few different bottles myself. I like the wine bottles, but I don't want wine bottles to be my only, only bottle type. I think these puck lights are going to... I should probably set up an experiment, too, and turn one of these puck lights on with a fresh set of batteries and let it run out. See how long it takes. 10 hours, 12 hours. Let's see. Yeah, definitely some pumpkin witch wood. That wouldn't be hard at all. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Not on the tripod. No, can't have you knocking that every which way. Yeah. So a lantern's a fun idea. We should we should do like a let's do a let's get another plate. <laughs> Hi, hey Furball. Furball, I need a plate of ideas. Okay. Whew. Stinks of stain. Yuck. Make sure I empty that bowl so the cats don't try to drink out of it tonight. So let's think, uh, let's think long-term projects here. Things to occupy the stream as we approach November, December, January, February times. Uh, paneled lantern. Which wood pumpkin. Probably a fancy carve. I'd use the TP paper clay. We already did it, Sapphire. <laughs> we finished the filming on the uh, main uh, witch bottle here as it's uh, approaching 11 o'clock and I have to proctor a state exam tomorrow. So I can't be sleepy in there. Um, I want to make a a big pumpkin monster. Big pumpkin scarecrow monster. I want to learn how to make burlap masks. Burlap scarecrow masks. There's a guy out there who's got a good tutorial on them, but I got a couple potentially new volunteers for my haunt this uh, 
this year. So I kind of want to make sure that they got better than just store-bought crap because I'm running lower on the running lower on masks. And everybody in my haunt has the same general look. Yeah, no kidding, Stacy. I'd love to be like, yeah, it's eleven o'clock. <laughs> Next project. <laughs> Um, maybe resign. The guy I saw, he uses a head form. He uses some cloth, some silicone, and obviously burlap. A few other things to make his masks, because they're really quite good. Um, yeah, TP paper clay is a little bit different. It's a lot finer in its texture. It holds detail so much better. Where the fiber clay gets you this rough, lumpy splat, and it's good for bulk. TP paper clay is like modeling clay. It's like jeweler's clay. It's really amazing. The particles inside are so much finer. It's much, 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 much better for holding detail. All right, so panel lantern. Witchwood pumpkin, fancy cards. Big pumpkin scarecrow monster. Burlap Scarecrow Masks. There you go. What other projects are on the plate? Oh, yeah, we got to do some new gravestones. Uh, finish upgrading tombstones. Finish slash progress. On tombstone upgrades. I at least got to do my stone, and I got to do uh, uh, Don's stone as well. <laughs> yeah, the guy I saw is, um, it's not cheesecloth, it's, it's actual burlap. Hmm. Coat boxes, hmm. Yeah, we don't have a Kohl's or anything else. The closest we have, we got a Walmart, and that's about it, unfortunately. What other projects can we do throughout the months here? I'm sure some other things will come to us. Yeah, I'm sure other folks can definitely take advantage of that, though. Absolutely. I'll probably get the itch to do a faux stained glass at some point. That's not strictly speaking for the haunt. Hmm. What else does the haunt need? Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. <laughs> I could use a few more welded giant monsters. <laughs> hmm. That sounds pretty good. Which hand's holding the bottles? Hmm. You know, I don't know about which hands, but I do think some sort of holder for lights. Like get a piece of rebar, put the required bends in it, and then have a spot that yeah. yeah beard here uh have a spot where something is coming up that is grabbing and holding that light source and there's a spot on it where there's still a piece of exposed metal so somebody can hammer that into the ground really really easy i also want to try to make those burial totems that i saw on uh, Facebook, that one guy made them. Maybe we can make them better. Try 
trouble with those is trying to get them to stand freely. And a lot of this stuff is kind of space intensive. And so many twisty, branchy things on them that they, um, you know, they just unwieldy. They fall over. And that's problematic. I think we've got enough stuff here, just idea wise, to be going for a while. So, all right. Good stuff. Good planning. All right, gang. Unfortunately, it is 11 p.m. I still have that state test to proctor. Even though I would rather <laughs> stay up and keep on crafting. So, thank you for bearing with me during our technical difficulties. Hopefully, they will not happen again. So, I don't have to lose my splark. That was so insanely frustrating. I think that'll go in the water now. But otherwise, we will see you all hopefully tomorrow for the final bit of filming on this. And, uh, and over this weekend, we'll work on the monster bottles some more. So thank you all. Take care. Have a fantastic evening. And thank you for the ideas. Just thanks for being here, too. Crafting alone sucks donkey nibbins. <laughs> Take care.